Each season brings the same dream, the same goal. At Tennessee, you're expected to challenge for the SEC title and make a run at the national championship. But even Philip Fulmer knows that one loss, one play, can alter your entire season. Tennessee playing what amounts to a 4 4 fake. And they're going to do it! Touchdown, my God, a touchdown! We just stepped on their face with a hobnail boot and broke their nose. But the Vols have not taken their last breath. An SEC title is still within reach. But first, state pride is at stake. Vanderbilt's Woody Woodenhofer has resigned himself to a losing season. But all that disappointment will go away if his Commodores can do what no one else believes it can. Vanderbilt, Tennessee, next. up a tune it means only one thing in the volunteer state time for football tennessee style for 22 seniors this will be their last track down peyton manning pass and the legendary ball walk and on this week of giving thanks over 100,000 tennessee faithful will pay homage to these seniors one final time today in state rivals meet vanderbilt and tennessee is the home depot sec football on cbs Volunteer State, you cheer for either Tennessee or you cheer for Vanderbilt. Checking the SEC East, Tennessee headed towards a showdown with the Florida Gators next week in Gainesville. Vanderbilt is simply trying to rescue a season. And hi, everyone. I'm Craig Bowler, Jack, along with former Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. Tennessee rolls in 8-1, sixth ranked in the country. However, for head coach Philip Fulmer, Andre not good enough. He wants this game. He wants to make a statement today. Well, he's certainly got enough weapons to make that statement. Most programs, they look for a star at either quarterback, running back, or wide receiver. When you look at Tennessee, they have all the pieces to be explosive offensively. They have two wide receivers in Dante Stallworth and Kelly Washington. They're as good as any in the country. They have a thousand yard rusher in Travis Stevens, but the guy that makes it all come together is quarterback Casey Clawson. Talking with Coach Philip Fulmer, he says what makes Casey so special is he plays within the structure of the offense and he's playing mistake-free football. Vanderbilt's Woody Woodenhofer will step down at season's end. His last chance to beat Tennessee, Andre, right here in Knoxville. Just three seasons ago, he was five and three. Thought he would turn the corner with the program, he, but it didn't happen. You look at Tennessee, excuse me, Vanderbilt offensively, they've got to rely on their quarterback, Greg Zoman, the career passing leader in just about every category. He'll spread the field and run the no-huddle offense, which has averaged 400 yards per game this season. Vandy, they're as good as anyone offensively. You throw the rivalry factor into this game, hey, anything can happen. This series dates back to 1892. Tennessee with a commanding lead. Last season, however, very close. 28-26 the final, Tennessee over Vanderbilt. There's the head coach of Tennessee, Philip Fulmer, 10th year as the head coach here in Knoxville. During that time, very impressive, 92-19, including a national championship back in 1998. At game time, for late November, 71 degrees, however, there is rain in the forecast. Last week, or last year, a two-point game. If you look at the last six games between these two teams, four of those de decided by seven points or less. <laughs> Set to play here in Knoxville, holiday weekend, but yet uh, Neyland Stadium near capacity. Vanderbilt won the toss and chose to receive. Alex Walls will kick away.
Tennessee, eight and one on the season. Sixth ranked nationally, Vanderbilt at two and seven. Winless in conference play. They have it teed up at the 35 yard line and ready to go. Ronald Hatcher and Jason Mathena back deep for Vanderbilt. Short kick taken by Hatcher and a short return at the 21 yard line. Quarterback for Vanderbilt, Greg Zolman holds nearly every passing record at Vanderbilt, makes his 33rd consecutive start today. Over 2,000 yards passing. Zolman, a senior from Dayton, Ohio. Has some confusion to start this game. Zolman now under center. This team averaging just over 22 points a game, nearly 400 yards offense. And it will start on the ground, and Rodney Williams is stopped for a two-yard loss offensively for Vanderbilt. Up front, it's Arkin, May, Byram, Kobolitsky, and Pat Green. And in the backfield, Williams, the tailback, Stricker, Mathena, the wideouts, along with Garrett, and the tight end is Simone. Steve Crosby, offensive coordinator. Been around 20 years. National Football League is a coach or a scout. Fourth year here at Vanderbilt. Hey, he's a pretty good one. Well-respected offensive coordinator in the SEC. Delay a game, whistle against Vanderbilt, so it'll be first and 15. Zolman wants to pass for the first time today, finds an opening, and with a nice soft touch, connects. Nezi Hassanalu with the reception, and defensively now for Tennessee. Jackson starts at one end. Moore, Hainsworth, and Overstreet up front. Tony Campbell, Dominique Stevenson, and Kenyon Whiteside, the linebackers. The defensive backs of Gaines, Baker, Battle, and Greer. And the coordinator for Tennessee defensively, John Chavis. That was a 16-yard pass play. Zolman wants to throw again. Good protection downfield. Breaks the tackle and then hit and drop at the 16-yard line. Looks like Rashad Moore just comes free from his tackle position. Greg Zolman shows play action pass, drops back. Really good coverage by the Tennessee secondary. Nothing there. Rashad Moore comes in, kind of lets him go, misses the tackle. Will Overstreet comes in and cleans the thing up for him. A loss of 14. Moore gets the start today in place of the injured John Henderson, the 2000 outlet trophy winner who's been bothered most of the season with an ankle. Zolman pulls it back down, has room to run. Turns the corner, takes his shot on the shoulder, and is knocked out of the 26-yard line. And Tennessee rolls in here defensively banged up. Henderson, as I mentioned, with the ankle problem. Eddie Moore with shoulders. Burnett and Rashad Baker with high ankle springs. And Andre Lott, the corner, will not play out with a hamstring. A lot of, lot of high ankle springs this day and age in, in football. I, I'd never heard of such so many injuries with that, so many players with that injury, but it seems to caught on around the country, so to speak. Seems to be the Vogue injury. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's, it's Vogue. Vogue. I have a high ankle sprain. Dan Stricker in motion on third down. Zolman steps, fires, contact as the ball made its way to Stricker and flags her down at midfield. Looks like Rashad Baker may have shot up a little bit early in his pass defense. A referee today, Bill Goss. So pass interference, the preliminary call. Pass interference, defense. And it's 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. 
that it, Greg Zoma just drops back and Dan Stricker coming across the middle. You see, you see the safe free safety Rashad Baker just show up just a tad bit early. No pass interference. Dan Stricker making the call himself, Greg. Stricker, a good target, big target at 6'3, 204 out of Cincinnati. Only a junior. Had nearly a thousand yards a year ago and climbing to nearly 900 this season. Not much on the ground. Very difficult to run against the, against the front of Tennessee. Dominic Stevenson, the middle linebacker, that's came up to one, make the tackle. That's another one of those players. Dominic Stevens comes Stevenson comes into the uh, ball game with a shoulder injury, but he's playing hurt. He's their leader on defense. He's got he's got to show up and play hurt, uh, Andre, just like a lot of other players. This this particular stat is is scary. Vanderbilt outscored in the first quarter 103 to 16. And it's especially scary when you're on the road and playing against a team with Tennessee's caliber. Second down and 10. Or hit as the handoff was given to Rodney Williams. Eddie Moore with the stop. Eddie Moore did not make the start. He's got shoulder problems also. A sprained knee. Yeah, this week in practice, I'm talking to defensive coordinator John Tavis, he only practiced a, a couple of snaps this week just to, to have his body ready to go for today's game. Well, Vanderbilt has scored only one time this season on their opening possession. That was against Kentucky two weeks ago. They got to the end zone. This is the seventh play of this drive. Zolman, the left-hander from the shotgun. Zolman step throws, fires complete. First down, defends on the spot. It's going to be close. But Stricker, a good possession receiver with the reception. Greg Zolman just looking downfield. He finds Dan Stricker in the middle of the field on an in route. He's going to be close right at the first down marker. Here you see Greg Zolman drop back, and he takes a, quite a shot from the Constantine Ritzman, the defensive end. Now the chains are out. It will be close and by the nose of the football. So this drive continues for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, it's important for them to come out and establish themselves offensively, especially in a hostile environment on the road. Such a big rivalry for them. I think the game means a little bit more to Vanderbilt than it does Tennessee. Tennessee's going to play hard. But it's, it's almost like Vanderbilt's Super Bowl coming into this stadium. That'll be first down from the 48 of Tennessee. Stricker in motion. Zolman shotgun. He'll go there most of the day. Quick drop throws, and it's complete again. Stricker now over 50 receptions on the season. In the first seven games, Tennessee was making sacks. Sacks every one, 8.5 passing plays. The last two games, however, one sack every 45 pass plays. I think it's probably due to some injuries, some, some off defensive linemen, a little beat up, those high ankle sprains. The, the secondary having to play a little bit more zone coverage than man-to-man. Than -man. Can't really get aggressive. Henderson, Henderson's been injured. Overstreet's battled the knee. The way with a draw. Williams trying to spin out of it. That play has gone nowhere for the third time. Constantine Richmond again in on the tackle. A lot, a lot of coordinators feel like you have to run the football. You have to establish the run to throw the football. A little draw play here, just not a whole lot there. Constantine Richmond is there, no, unblocked, nobody there to uh, to block him, and he makes a great play. Richmond from Germany, a two-year letterman. Played one year of high school football at North Florida Christian High School in Tallahassee. But he was quite a player overseas. Zolman now, third down, throws deep, has man coverage, some bumps, but no flags. And MJ Garrett, number 24, was the intended receiver, and Jabari Greer, the right corner, provided coverage. And Jabari Greer did a good job of, of getting himself in position to defend against MJ Garrett. Just a fade route along the sideline. Good job for the, by Jabari Greer of holding MJ Garrett outside, not allowing him to come back inside to make the reception. Joe Webb will punt. Trying to knock it inside the 10-yard line. Dante Stallworth lets it go, and it gets a Tennessee bounce into the end zone, so they'll place it back at the 20-yard line. A 50-yard punt. No return. Tennessee will have it for the first time when we come back. 
Welcome back to Knoxville. High above Neyland Stadium. Holds just under 105,000. Hope you had a good holiday weekend. Tennessee. First time of the football. Clawson wants to throw. To the front. Kelly Washington. So dangerous. Picks up eight yards to the 28-yard line. And there's the quarterback, the sophomore from Northridge, California, Casey Clawson. Giant leaps in his development. 14-2 and two as a starter. He's the guy that makes it go. He has all those weapons around him, and he's just, just got to distribute the football. Second down and two. Clawson again steps and throws. Far side at Washington. A first down and more at the 36-yard line. Offensively for the Tennessee Volunteers, and up front a big line. Sean Young, Weary, Well, Smith, and Offenhusel. Stevens will start at tailback. Bartholomew, the fullback. Stallworth and Parker, the wideouts, and Finlayson is the tight end. And there's the offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders, was a Vols quarterback back in the mid-'80s, third year. As the coordinator, Jackson with the play action. Steps and throws, and a pop. Down to the tight end, and he's a big target at 6'5", 265, Jason Witten. This is just Casey Clawson being a football player. He actually got to Jason Witten a little bit late. Play action pass, and down the middle. Jason Witten's open right now. He, Casey Clawson waits it out, allows him to get behind the secondary, and Jason Witten comes up with a big play. Great pass and good job of being a just a football player by Casey Clawson. Former defensive end turned tight end. First down, Tennessee. They moved the ball in their first series at the Vanderbilt 33-yard line. Again, Clawson wants to throw, and he's knocked down at the 21-yard line. Dante Starworth with the catch. Let's set that Vanderbilt defense this afternoon. Up front, Conyers, Beer, Beard, and Losi. The linebackers. Hillen Meyer, Bruner, Bradford, and Nate Morrow, a fifth-year senior. And the secondary of McWhorter, Jackson, Lurcius, and Parker. Herb Patera, defensive coordinator, also handles the linebackers for Woody Woodenhofer. Clawson throws, man coverage, Stallworth. He had a couple last week against Kentucky incomplete, and that stops the clock with 7.49 left in the opening quarter. Well, they're working Aaron the quarter over just from one side to the other. Those two cornerbacks, Lorenzo Parker, are, they're going to have their hands full. Ke Kelly Washington and Dante Stallworth, they complement one another so well. Weapons on both sides of the field now as opposed to earlier in the season when it was only Kelly Washington. From the eye, second down from the 20. Clawson with the fake, throws wide open, corner, touchdown! Tennessee, Dante Stallworth. Casey Clawson here just shows play action pass. He's, he's moving around, moving around, buying himself some time. And McCorder comes up, bites up just a little bit and allows Dante Stallworth to get to the back of the end zone and make a play. Maybe coming back, the officials have huddled and a flag. Yards from the previous spot, repeat, second down. So wipe out the catch from Dante Stallworth. And they mark it five yards the other way, back to the 25. This is just a good job by the receivers to continue to make a play, but then you have it come back when the guy just releases down the field. You know, all it takes is a step or two. Second down and 15 now for Tennessee. On the ground, Travis Stevens. Went up the middle. The hole was plugged. He bounces outside and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Harold Lurcius with the tackle. Travis Stevens just amazes me. I got a chance to watch him on film yesterday and just, just amazingly quick. For a little guy like that, and, and he packs a pop, packs some power. And yet another flag. Grabbing the face mask, five yards friendly against the defense. Only five yards from the end of the run, repeat second down. So they trade five yard penalties. There was no gain on the play, so now second down from the 20. 
That was a good look at the sophomore. You know, it's all about progression. He says, you know, I see the game slower than I did a year ago, and you know about that, Andre, how the game slows down as you learn your offense. That means he is developing as a quarterback when it gets slower to him. Second down, Clawson, good protection, step, throws over the middle and complete. Montrell Jones, number 86, uh, a freshman, the intended receiver. There's just so many weapons on this team. Montrell Jones, they go down as deep as Tony Brown. He'll check in, and they're young receivers as well. So you'll have Dante Stallwork coming back next year. Kelly Washington's only a freshman. Jason Fen Finlinson, he's, he's back. Excuse me, John Finlinson. Jason Witten's only a sophomore. A lot of talent, a lot of young talent for this volunteer offense. Tennessee splits the field wide. Stallworth in motion. Third down, Clawson from the shotgun. Step throws, nearly intercepted, incomplete. Good coverage by Vanderbilt. Rick Lyle, the strong safety, number 32. Good job of the pass rush. Actually, a little man-to-man, -man, surprisingly, in case forces Casey Clawson up. And Nick Lyle right under trying to undercut Montrell Jones for, uh, for the interception surprisingly that Vanderbilt is playing as much man-to-man -man on this end of the field down near the red zone as they are. You bring up a good point because this past defense ranked 109th in the NCAA. Play clock winding down. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt and the kick is away. Alex Walls and connects. 37 yards. They had the touchdown to Stallworth. It was called back but Walls hits from 37. So Tennessee on the board, up by three. Six fifty-six left, opening quarter here in Knoxville, Tennessee, with a three-nothing lead after the field goal by Walls, thirty-seven yards, nine plays, sixty yards, and two thirty-seven off the clock. Push-up time. <laughs> I don't want any part of those today. <laughs> It's almost like a small win for Vanderbilt. Even though they gave up three points, they, they were able to take six from the board. So, small win. High hanger. Hatcher inside the five. Oh, Hatcher down at the 14. Oh, my. What a hit. Hey, Thomas Stallworth just came free. A linebacker comes free on Hatcher and just nobody touches him. Big, big hit delivered by Thomas Stallworth. I'll get some notice on uh, when they read you tapes. Absolutely. Be a little ooh and an eye in the film room. Vanderbilt down by three. Have the football again for the second time. Zolman on that first drive. Three of four passing for 27 yards. Going to try to ground once again, Rodney Williams. Penn State, Michigan State. Let's get an update. Back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. Tim. All right, Craig, after an 0 4 score, it's 5 and 5 would look awfully good in Happy, Happy Valley. Matt Seneca digs it in for a touchdown. Michigan State has just added a field goal. Right now, it's the Nittany Lions by 4. Back to Craig. Well, after that horrible start and all the pressure with Joe Paterno. Well, Nittany Lions turning things around a little bit. Up 7-3 early. A rough start for oh. Penn State this season. Second down and 6-3 wide out. The top of your screen, they throw, pitch and catch. And it's top. More yards for Chris Young, number 16, a sophomore from Batesville, Mississippi. Now, Zolman will use six, seven different wide receivers during this game. Also, will throw it to his tight end, Simone, on occasion. And some will come in the game just to run defensive backs off. So they're continuing to run them so they'll get tired, cramp up later in the ball game. And then he'll, he'll be able in the second half to come back and have some success once the secondary for Tennessee gets tired. A 15-yard completion. Now four of five for 42 yards. Three different receivers so far. Again, they try to grab. Oh, Rodney Williams is just a punching bag right now. 
Tennessee just knocking him around. It really is. Albert Hainsworth, the guy who's benefited most from the return of John Henderson. But he just comes free. There's really no, no one on him. He just comes free up the middle. Just, just playing fabulous the front four. They got to come up with a different running play out of that shotgun formation if they're going to even try to run the football against this Tennessee front four. He's had five carries for minus one. Zorman throws far sideline. It's caught and out of bounds goes Mathena. Woody Woodenhofer, five years head coach in Nashville and this is his last chance he stepped down early November and this is his last chance to be Tennessee and Knoxville if there's one thing you see you know about Woody Woodenhofer he is an excellent and excellent defensive coordinator he was my defensive coordinator in Detroit the first two years when I played for the Detroit Lions so I know that Woody Woodenhofer can coach defense third down and four from the shotgun double tight set Zolman pumps and throws complete first down Dan Stricker. Woody Woodenhofer turned in his resignation November 5th, hoping Vandy could get a jump start on finding his replacement. It's just been a very, very tough, frustrating year, and uh, I just felt that I've taken the program as far as I could, and uh, the program is the most important thing, and uh, I felt uh, that, uh, you know, uh, resigning at this point would give them an opportunity to get out there and have a search early for a leader that might be able to take this program to where it should go. Woody Woodenhofer is a handoff and a big gainer, the best of the day for Williams. Finally some breathing room up around the 41-yard line. Jabari Greer made the hit. Andre, going back to Woodenhofer, it's interesting that he made the decision, really no surprise, but yet he wants to give this university a chance to find the replacement. A lot of needs, and we talked to coaches and players this week, it's about facilities. In fact, there's even talk about relaxing the admission requirements for athletes. It really is. It's really tough to get into Vanderbilt, and then not only to get into Vanderbilt, the, the quality of athlete you need to compete on the SEC. I mean, it, it's almost next to impossible for them to uh, to compete with the, with the admissions the way they are. Zorman rolls out of trouble near a first down. He needed to get to the 40 and a half. Well, they're going to mark his knee down around the 42. John Henderson, the big fella, 6'7", 290, even with a bad ankle was in there. Checks in and just makes things happen. His presence, just his presence on the football field is amazing. A lot of people ask why Henderson returned. We asked him. He said, you know what? Sure, I could have gone pro. Won the Outland last year, but it was all about the SEC ring. It was all about the national championship. Opportunity to win the national championship. And now Zolman takes a look defensively at Tennessee and calls a timeout. Third down and one facing Vandy when we come back here in Knoxville. Tennessee by three. Sixth-ranked Tennessee leading Vanderbilt by three. Vandy driving tonight on CBS. The most famous reindeer ball is back. Don't miss this holiday classic. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, tonight on CBS. It's a big down for Vanderbilt. Outscored in the first quarter of the season, 103 to 16. Eighth play of this drive. Zolman wants to throw. Caught near sideline. First down, out of bounds. Mathena. That's having confidence in your passing game when you go on third down and short. Even though you're in the shotgun, you're going to throw it to Mathena on the outside. Greg Zoman, a lot of confidence in the passing game for the Tennessee Volunteers. Just drops back. He knows that he has Mathena on, along the sideline. Good catch, staying in bounds and picking up the first down. Mathena so quick off the cut. He's been clocked at 440. The 4-4 four, four and the 40. That's quick. Bandy 67 total yards. Tennessee was 60. They come back to the ground game. Williams breaks the tackle and takes a shot on the back of the pad at the 29. They try a little bit, something a little bit different. They're going to try to counter out of the shotgun with uh, with the running back Rodney Williams. They've tried to the draw and it hadn't had much success with it. So they go back and they run the counter back to the short side of the field. And good job by Rodney Williams allowing the, the play to develop in front of him, just following his blockers. Rodney Williams filling in for the injured Lou Thomas, who's missing his third straight game with a foot injury. Thomas, the leading rusher, 
Just under 700 yards this season. How about this, Andre? Tenth play of this drive. They fake into Williams, batted down from behind as Zolman tried to throw to the far side. Looks like Bernard Jackson comes free from his defensive end position, just off the edge, play action pass, and just around the tight end of getting to Greg Zolman. Good job by Bernard Jackson, uh, just right around the get, right around the tight end to make the play. I'll tell you, when these ends are healthy, Jackson and Will Overstreet, they can pinch and really pressure offenses and really test those tackles. Absolutely, and then you throw John Henderson in yeah. the mix, and you got quite a pass rush from Tennessee. Vanderbilt three of four on third down tries today. Zolman, again, shotgun. Throws, long, incomplete. Brandon Smith open, but long on the throw by Zolman, and oh, he'd like to have that back. All right, Andre, here's the uh, the big question. Rivalry game, you've got a season that you're just trying to rescue. You're on the road, what do you got to lose? You go fourth down, you go forward or field goal? Well, I think at this point, you try to create some momentum along your sideline, try to put some points on the board. You've had a long drive down the football field. You want to come away with some points or give yourself a chance to put some points on the board. Stay in this thing early. Jimmy Stover, a walk-on. One of three field goal opportunities, as long as the 23. This is going to be a 46-yarder. He's a left-footer. Looks long enough. And no good. Had the distance, but wide to the left. 3-0, Tennessee. Andre, I knew Smokey wouldn't miss this game. He's right there in the middle of everything. Right, right in the middle of it. <laughs> Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee up by three. Telling us about it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's doing his own play-by-play -play down there. Tennessee with a three-point lead. They start this drive from the 29-yard line. High formation. Hand off. Stevens, stiff arms. For a tough runner down to the 39. Andre, here's a look at the Exxon and Mobile playbook. This is a play that Tennessee really like. They can get to it from a lot of different formations. You see the cornerback, if he's off, they're going to run the hitch route. If he comes up, they're going to convert the, the route to a fade. It's automatic. Once, once you have man-to-man, -man, if you get pressure defense, you're going to convert it to a fade. Last week, Casey Clawson hit Dante Stallworth on that play about three times for touchdowns. Nine-yard pickup. Stevens again, the ball carrier, and that strength of Stevens squeezes out the first down it's a 41 Hunter Hillenmeyer the outside linebacker made the tackle boy Stevens has waited his turn he's followed some great backs here at Tennessee packed with power at 5'9 190 he's averaging 126 yards a game you know Randy Sanders the yeah. offensive coordinator there Little and also, as, as Philip Fulmer said, you know what? He plays like a man. What a compliment. Absolutely. What a compliment. Again, from the eye, first down, Tennessee. Clawson, good coverage downfield. Throw underneath it. Was it a catch? Ball still on the deck. Vanderbilt points one way. What will the officials say? Antoine Bradford showed up with bad intentions. Woo! See, Casey Clawson just drops straight back, flushed up in the pocket, does a good job of knowing where his receivers are, and Jason Finlinson just meets Antoine Bradford. Say hello. <laughs> Clawson 0 for his last four after starting the game 4 of 4. Shotgun. Running through traffic, breaking tackles. Travis Stevens, averaging just under five yards a carry. He's 10th all-time. Tennessee rush list. Yeah, he's the little engine that could. Look at the players, the running backs who have uh, been here in Knoxville. Jamal Lewis, Travis Henry, Travis Stevens. 5'11", 5'9", 5'9". They get it done. They get it done. It's not bad to run behind those big guys that are up front. <laughs> well, you've got a Fred Weary pulling out there at 6'4", 301. 
or Herrera, who's a 300-pounder. Clawson throws and on a knee. It's complete. Montreal Jones, the freshman. Hunter Hillenmeyer blitzing off the corner right in Casey Clawson's face. And that shows you the athletic ability of Casey Clawson when he can stand there with a guy in his face, still deliver the ball out for a completion. Final seconds of this first quarter winding down. Sometimes you just got to make a play at, at, at the quarterback position. He, he's doing a job. Philip Fulmer pacing. They were 24 and a half point favorites. They're up by three. That ends the first quarter with the score of Tennessee on top of Vanderbilt, 3-0. We'll return to Neyland Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. We start the second quarter in Knoxville, Tennessee up by three, and this unique perspective of today's game provided courtesy of the Saturn Lightship. Saturn's new Lightship is proud to bring you these aerial views of Knoxville and Neyland Stadium from high above Saturn, hoping you enjoy the game and the view. Second down and six, Clawson shotgun. Throws near side, pitch and catch, Stallworth. Second effort for the 28. And for an update on Penn State, Michigan State, back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Craig, Jeff Smoker has really been playing the quarterback position well at Michigan State. Here he finds Charlie Rogers, 59 yards, to give the Spartans the lead, and they're now on the one-yard line as they open play in the second quarter in East Lansing. We'll keep you posted. Back to Andre and Craig. All right, thank you, Tim. Here at 3-0 Tennessee, Volunteers driving with a first down. Travis Stevens hops his way to the 25-yard line. Wally Conyers uh, made the tackle. Boy, look at that. His first three seasons, he had to wait his turn. It's amazing. 872 yards, and then this year has exploded for nearly 1,200 and this is nine touchdowns already this season, 11 for his career coming into this season. Clawson throws to the flat. It's Stevens. Stops and reverses to the 26. Hillenmeyer and Conyers teamed up. Made the tackle. He's right in the back of his right tackle. Will up now, or he had the middle of the field after he broke the run back. Probably could have gone for another five to, five to seven yards. He runs right in the back of his offensive lineman. Stevens hobbled a bit. On his way out, looks like maybe a left ankle. Run up the back of those guys that are 6'8", 320 pounds, <laughs> you'll come off limping too. I'm sure full of former concern with his star back. Third down and eight. You heard the clap from Clawson as he sets and throws. It's Kelly Washington. Second effort. Breaks a pair of tackles to the 13-yard line. This guy is a specimen. 6'4", 225, a freshman, yes, but 22 years of age. It's what we call a smash route. You got Kelly Washington on the outside and a corner route from the inside receiver. Kelly Washington has man-to-man -man coverage and brings the route inside, running away from the defensive back and allowing himself to get open. Casey Clawson does a fine job of finding him, see, recognizing man-to-man -man coverage, and completing the football. I mentioned he's 22 because he spent four years in the Marlins baseball organization, now in college. Tennessee out in Tennessee, so sure come to Knoxville to the nine-yard line. Troy Fleming. You know, he is the defensive gem. He was one that built the steel curtain in Pittsburgh. Four Super Bowls with the likes of Jack Ham and Lambert. Mm -hmm. You know, he told us, though, I definitely want to continue coaching. I've still got too much to give. On the other side of the ball, a very important uh, man in Tennessee's equation, Randy Sanders. Very potent offense. The pitch. Fleming. Took a shot at the 11-yard line, driven back. A good hit by Nate Morrow, the outside linebacker, number 40. Gives good, good penetration by the Vanderbilt front, front three and allows Nate Morrow, the linebacker, outside linebacker, to come up and make a play, fight off the block of Will Bartholomew, and come up and make a play. 6'4", 245-pound senior just getting low, fighting underneath the block and coming off and making a play on Troy Fleming. One of the team captains for Vanderbilt. You look at this season, 30 possessions inside the red zone. They come away with 18 touchdowns. 
seven field goals. Clausen again, shotgun, throws in zone, off their hands, incomplete. Jason Witten, the tight end. He talked to Randy Sanders, and he said he'd, he'd gone down to watch the Tennessee Titans and learned how to teach the, the, uh, the tight end position. You see him move Jason Witten around. That time he split out wide like a couple of plays before Kelly Washington was out wide. They run that smash route. Corner route by the in inside receiver Dante Stallworth. And now Jason Witten from the tight end position is coming down inside. A little Frank Wycheck in Tennessee yeah, yeah, is what they're looking for. Indeed. Alex Walls already connecting from 37 yards in the opening quarter. This will be from 27. Walls the punch and the kick and good. So a 37 and a 27 yard field goal off the foot of Alex Walls in Tennessee. Leading Vanderbilt, 6 nothing. Eleven fifty-one left before halftime. Vanderbilt very much in this game, only down by six after a pair of field goals. Tennessee, though, chewed some clock. Andre, 13 plays. They go 61 yards over five minutes off the clock. Well, it really has. And uh, the football games are made of small wins. And Vanderbilt, they've gotten two small wins, so to speak. They've a lot held Tennessee to two field goals, allowing themselves. If they drive it down, score a touchdown, they're ahead in this ball game. And the kick is away. Taken at the one-yard line. It's Ronald Hatcher. Hatcher breaks up the 25, up around the 30-yard line. Good return and good field position for Vanderbilt. Craig Bowler, Jack Andre Ware. This is, bottom line, the Super Bowl for Vanderbilt. The season they've had, this is it right here. Yeah, talking to the players from Vanderbilt, they seem to feel a lot more strong coming into this football game. It means a little bit more to them than it does the Tennessee players. Not to say that it's not important. Tennessee, for pride, doesn't want to lose to Vanderbilt. A lot of talk as well about how this team responding since Woody Woodenhofer announced his resignation. There were some newspaper reports that said, well, who quit on who? The players we talked to was pretty much split. Zolman sets and throws. Overthrows Stricker along the far sideline. Well, at the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Army player of the game. And we go to our blimp, and we've just been told uh, by our weathermen in the blimp, rain, and it's been heavy rain to the west of Knoxville, should arrive within the next 20 to 30 minutes. Wow. Wind included. We'll keep an eye on it. 11.35 left in the half. Zolman throws. Picked off at midfield. Mark Jones still on his horse. Jones pushed out at the 24-yard line. It's actually just a bad, bad read by Greg Zolman. They run a little pick scheme. They have three receivers split out left. The two outside receivers pick for the, the other receiver coming underneath, and he decides he's going to go out and try to take a shot down the field. Good job by Mark Jones of playing center field, coming over from his free, free safety position and making a play outside. Just receivers inside, not a chance. It looked like he was going to his running back, Rodney Williams, outside. Mark Jones coming over and make a fine play. The good job of staying at home and playing the football by Mark Jones. That's why he was able to come up with that, that interception. Six interceptions thrown by Zolman. And the first pick for Jones this year, Clawson. And Tennessee in good field position. They want the touchdown. Overthrows Stallworth. Well, they went for the throat right after the interception. They're not going to mess around with this Vanderbilt secondary. A post route with a corner route coming behind it. Designed to confuse the secondary. And that's exactly what it did. Dante Stallworth from the inside slot position going to the corner. It's overthrown by Casey Clausen. But it was, it was designed and set up extremely well Tennessee 121 total yards up by six looking for more Boston shotgun better take one way and go the other Crosby big number 93 
broke through a 302 pound senior just looked like uh, like Travis Stevens lost his footing out here Doyle Crosby just here coming trying to get up the field just falls into the play place outside position on the right tackle will often Musel, excuse me just kind of falls into the play and makes a play from his defensive end position his 19th tackle he's had 10 career sacks he's a very active nose tackle a loss of three third down and 13. Clawson on the run, directing traffic. Inside the 20, down to around the 17-yard line. Took a couple of hits from Hillemeyer and Bruner. It's, a, it's a, a thing of beauty to watch Casey Clawson work the pocket and watch him mature as a quarterback. Drops back, there's really, uh, really good coverage by the Vanderbilt secondary. Not much there, he feels a little pressure from Doral Crosby on the outside. Steps up, works the middle of the pocket and pulls it down when there's nobody there. He does not make mistakes, doesn't try to force anything down the football field, pulls it down and, and runs, gets the team in a position to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and three, Tennessee five of eight on fourth down tries this season. Clawson under center, sets and throws underneath. They gamble and it pays off, first down as they get the ball to Bobby Graham. Talk to, talk to Coach Philip Fulmer. He says, Casey Klaus is really maturing. He audibles to this play, drops back, sees the middle of the field come wide open. Bobby Graham works it, sets it down. They, they look, gave, gave Casey Klaus a blitz look. He checked to the play. Bobby Graham recognizes zone coverage. They check out, go back to zone. Casey Clawson recognizes it. The receiver and the quarterback on the same page. The results are first down. You know what just happened? Phil and Fulmer told his team, I want a statement. He just told his team to go do it. That's a statement right there. In the corner, touchdown, a flag down. Kelly Washington, there may have been a push off around of, the goal line. Yeah, a lot of holding and pushing and pulling and all that good stuff. So we'll see what, what the result is here. Here's Bill Goss holding defense. Yep. Touchdown. 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 Shows the strength of Kelly Washington just fighting and battling and fighting, battling the corner outside, comes free, never misses a beat. Lorenzo Parker just kind of trying to hold him. That, that's a big, big, strong receiver. 6'4, 225 pounds. Washington with his fourth touchdown reception of the season. And for Casey Clawson, that's his 18th throw for six. He's closing in on a thousand yard, a thousand yard season receiving as well. Timeout, extra point to come. 9.07 before the half. 9.07 left before half. Tennessee going for two after the touchdown catch by Kelly Washington. Tennessee one out of two and two-point conversion tries. Clawson throws on the run and it's forward. Andre, you talked about all of his weapons. Well, he used Washington for six. And now it goes to Stallworth for the two-pointer. They, they bring Dante Stallworth down in motion, and it's just a sprint to the corner of the end zone. Casey Clawson does a fine job of reading it out and delivering the football in stride to Dante Stallworth. Just brings him down in motion, and he goes to the corner of the end zone, give it to him on the run. Timeout on the field, 14-0, Tennessee. Nine oh seven left before halftime. Sixth ranked Tennessee on top of Vanderbilt by fourteen. And after that interception, Tennessee takes the football five plays, twenty four yards, and a ten yard touchdown by Kelly Washington. And then the two point conversion was good by Dante Stallworth. And a high hanger, Hatcher at the five. Tinsley, the running back, playing on special teams, 
unaccounted for and just comes through. <laughs> wow! I can feel that one up here. It kind of shook the stadium. Oh, ripple effect. Woo! Comes free, just untouched. And I don't think he slowed down. Full speed ahead. Vanderbilt, after that shot, will start at the 15 yard line. Tennessee building the yards here. 145 over 73. They pitch it out. Not much. Mathena to the 19 yard line. Constantine Richmond makes a tackle. Constantine Richmond just stays at home. A little play fake, fake inside to the running back, Rodney Williams, and then he flips it out to Jason Mathena. But Constantine Richmond makes the play as he just stays at home, wasn't fooled at all. You know, Richmond uh, weighs 252. When he arrived around. from Germany, he was 210. Tells you what the weight room can do. Absolutely. Stricker goes in motion on second down and six. Zolman, the left-hander, under pressure and takes the seat. It's like a Dimitri Veal from his defensive end. Position just comes through. Swim move to the inside. Just beats Pat Green from his from the right tackle position. Just a quick swim move inside. 6'3, 275 pounds, and he can motor. Just gives him the outside move, comes underneath with a rip move, swims it inside and, and all over. Greg Zolman. Second sack on Zolman. Beal was a junior college All-American a year ago at Cerritos Community College out in California. Zolman throws to the far side and on a knee. MJ Garrett with the reception. And Wednesday on CBS, Garth Brooks performs live from the beautiful beaches of South Padre Island. It's your last chance to catch Garth Brooks live coast to coast Wednesday only on CBS. Joe Webb back at his own goal line. His first kick, kick traveled 50 yards, end over end. Stallworth at the 45. Dangerous every time he touches the football. Turns on the jet. Stallworth around the corner. One man to beat. Touchdown. Stallworth allows everything to set itself. He starts his punt return to the right, sets it back. All his blockers are coming from inside out, up the middle of the field. Now it's just speed. It's just athletic ability. Dante Stallworth down the sideline. Amazing speed. Kills, Craig. Does a fine job of setting up the blocks and then cutting back to the outside. Woo. There's a touchdown. After the touchdown, dead ball, unsportsmanlike on the defense. It's going to be 15 yards on the try for point. Well, so the try for point, as Philip Fulmer will argue, one coach has to restrain him. This will not just be a chip shot extra point try. This will actually be uh, placed down at the 25, so a 35-yard extra point. Alex Walls will handle it. down the middle. Star Wars rumbles 55 on the punt return. Tennessee by 21. Well, officially 102,519 at Neyland Stadium today. Dante Stallworth. What a couple of weeks he's had, Andre. He, uh, he scored three touchdowns against Kentucky on eight receptions, 169 yards, and today comes back with a 55-yard punt return. The extra point is good, and Tennessee, after a sluggish start, 21-0 over Vanderbilt. He's out with that wrist injury earlier in the season. He's bounced back, and 28 receptions, 554 yards, and then you get him back on special teams as well. So now you've got another weapon. Walls will kick. Two yards deep. He'll bring it out. Boy, the fire has been lit. 
will get the scoop on all college football polls, including the Sportsline 117 power ranking. Just go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. If you're Vanderbilt, this drive, you got to come down at least put together something just for morale, just for some type of momentum swing to get themselves back in this football game. Now, Vanderbilt's offense can move the football. Nearly 400 yards per game average and 22 points they posted per game. They're down 21 with 6.45 left in the half and a little hole for Williams and he picks up five, maybe six. And for an update on Ohio State, Michigan. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Craig. Well, Michigan's last gasp, but a share of the Big Ten title and a spot in the BCS with a tiebreaker against Illinois. Falls as John Navarre's pass is picked off by Dustin Fox. The Illini will be the Big Ten's BCS entry, not necessarily the most attractive. Back to Craig and Andre. All right, thank you, Tim. Yeah, Illinois, they're finding the line now. It's a big win by Ohio State. Oh. Going to Michigan and pulling that one out. A big, big win. A pick up of eight. Second down, two. Flags are down. Again, Williams, the ball carrier. White side. The weak side backer made the tackle, but a flag down with 6.01 left before half. Former says it's offside defense penalties decline first down. Now coach is doing what a coach does best. No wonder he's so active. <laughs> it's against his ball club. <laughs> I like what Vanderbilt's doing here. They've gone away from the shotgun for a little while. They're backed up inside inside their own five yard line. Now they're just going to try to play some power football. They know John Henderson's out of the football game. It's allowing Jamie Byron, their senior, 6'4", 274 pound junior, to block backside and Rodney Williams to run up the middle of the field. Williams tries to spin out of a tackle. And let's go back to New York one more time. Update on Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Beware of interstate rivalries, Greg. Quentin Griffin takes it in from eight yards out, but in the Bedlam series, a close game last year in Stillwater. Very close in the second. OU by only a touchdown. So the Sooners have that early lead, 7-0. Thank you, Tim. Here it's Tennessee by 21 over Vanderbilt. Second down eight. Stricker on the end round. And pulled down from behind. A flag has been tossed. Hainsworth in on the stop. Another flag. Here's Bill Goss. Holding. Offense, at least 10 yards from the previous spot, repeat second down. Well, Andre, here's uh, one of the hottest topics around college basketball, the Bowl Championship Series rankings, and currently Nebraska running one, Miami two, Oklahoma at number three, Florida followed by Oregon. It's, uh, Nebraska is going to tumble. Absolutely. It's going to be totally different come Monday morning. Second down, 18. Movement. Flags again. And they're going to whistle this play dead. Hella conference around the nine-yard line. Dead ball, offsides, defense, calls movement in the offensive line. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's going back and forth with <laughs> yeah. penalties here. Now you look at the last four possessions. Punt, missed field goal. They got picked, and then the punt, and that was returned by Stallworth. It's a bit, it's a, this is really an important drive for Vanderbilt. Second down and 13. 
They run the football to the 21. And Rodney Williams continues to pound away. Kenyon Whiteside made the tackle. Williams is senior from Birmingham, Alabama. Good job there by Curtis Brentow, the tight end, throwing a good block for Rodney Williams, allowing him to get a short game, but protecting the football. Vanderbilt does not want to turn it over down here inside the 20, their own 20 yard line. That's where Tennessee's defense has been so tough on those third down and long. Bandy today, third, three on a six on third down five. Zolman, shotgun, the left-hander, throws pressure, throws. It's caught. Williams breaking a tackle and rushes to the first down marker. He's going to be short at the 27. Campbell with great pursuit for Tennessee. Albert Hainsworth just playing relentless today with the absence of John Henderson. He's playing extremely well, getting to Greg Zolman forcing him to go early to Rodney Williams. Rodney Williams just fighting and scratching, trying to get, get to the first down marker. Comes up a little bit short. Joe Webb, his third punt of the afternoon, his longest of 50. And a nice kick here. Stallworth at the 22. Stumbles and nearly uh, challenges Bandy to come get him. And they do. Well, let's take a look at our SEC moment presented by Sonic. We take you back November 29th, 1975. Vanderbilt won its last game in Knoxville with a 17-14 victory over its cross-state rivals, Tennessee. The last time, 1975. It's been a long time. The last victory, 1982. But the last time here, 1975. It's been too long. Tennessee from the 20-yard line. Big hole left side. Travis Stevens. One of the weapons you talked about, Andre, was Stallworth in Washington and the tight end Witten. Now they go ground game a little bit. And Scott Wells, the center. And Fred Weary, the, the left guard, just they do a, a fantastic job of opening the hole for Travis Stevens, allowing him to cut back. Scott Wells, a former All-State wrestler. Flags are down. A lot of flags in this first half. Hard counts by both quarterbacks making both sides jump. Easy five yards. Dead ball. Start. On the offensive line, five-yard penalty, second down. Well, today's aerial view of the game brought to you by the Saturn Light Shift. Red in color, over 165 feet in length, this gentle giant of the skies is the newest airship in the world. Saturn is proud to be a part of CBS's coverage of college football. Now the lights are on, and we understand rain on its way. Coming up on halftime, second down, six. Boston throws on the slant, top and pulled down. Bobby Graham, his second catch of the afternoon, and a first down, Tennessee at the 33-yard line. Lurchus in on the, on the tackle. Good job by Casey, Casey Clawson there. Double slant routes from both the inside and outside receiver. He's working the three-step game to perfection. Clock running, Clawson under center. Feels some pressure. Flags again down, throws on the run, up on the ladder, what a nice catch by Stolworth. Took a hard shot on that shoulder, and a little turf. Looks like there's a flag down. Flag at the 26, Stallworth. Now he wants to go over and clean off the windshield. Holding, offense. At least 10 yards from the previous spot, repeat the down. Well, coming up on the College Football Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman will get you caught up to date on all the today's scores and highlights. And that's all coming up on the College Football Halftime Report. That flag, by the way, Andre wiping out a nice catch of 25 yards by Stallworth. 2.12 left before half. Now first and 20 for Tennessee. They set up the screen nicely. Travis Stevens, but Vanderbilt read it. Antoine Bradford would have nothing to do with it. Bradford 
averaging 11 tackles a game very active 102 on the season it, it was really a, a good play by Antoine Bradford they, Tennessee catches Vander, the Vanderbilt defense in the exact defense they wanted them in. Man-to-man -man coverage when you're going to run the screen. The receivers can run guys off and run them down the field. Sean Young, the, the uh, left tackle for Vanderbilt, just didn't get out on Antoine Bradford to, get, to make the block. And a timeout. We'll be back. Well, Rocky Top, the rain cometh. In fact, our blimp is going to have to make its way uh, home to base down as the wind and the rain is on its way. A minute 54 left before halftime. Second down 19. Kloss in the pitch, but again, flags down. You can hear the, the moans and groans out of the stadium. <laughs> they want the referees to let them play. Dead ball, ball start. On the offensive line, second down. Nine flags in this game. Hey, the New York City Fire Department was here Thursday. Philip Fulmer and the volunteers, handshakes, high fives all around. Be safe. Good luck, guys. And a few hats exchanged. Well, the country continues just to come together, all different parts of the country. Whitten is not in motion. Clawson throws back. Kelly Washington. Puts the tackle and hit at the 29. Philip Meyer chased him down. I love the play. The two, the left guard and the left tackle, Sean Young and Fred Weary. Fred Weary, the more athletic lineman along the, the front five for Tennessee, out pulling out, blocking out on the corners. Lorenzo, Lorenzo Parker on a little screen pass to Kelly Washington. Third down and 14. Clawson throws. Complete. Boy, he threaded that ball nicely, and once again, Graham with the reception. Bobby Graham with his third catch this half. You know what? Tennessee's up 21, Andre, and they continue to try to set this in a hurry-up offense. They want more, as again, Phil Phillip Fulmer wants to make the statement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Clawson, five-step drop. Near sideline, Witten, the tight end. Oh, he's a load. To the 48. Dylan Meyer helped out. Witten, 265, 65. Casey Clausen's doing a, a, a fantastic job of distributing the football. He's gone to Jason Witten, one play, the play before Bobby Graham, play before that, Kelly Washington, Dante Stallworth. He's getting everybody involved, taking full advantage of all the weapons that he has around him. And Andre, we asked him yesterday, how do you make everybody happy? Well, got to get everybody involved early. We're watching how. <laughs> That's right. You know what? Everybody gets a touch here and there. And it keeps you focused. Absolutely. Sunday down three. The screen just here. This time into the hands of Steven. Oh, he lowered the hit. Lost the, lost the football. Vanderbilt has it. He dished out the hit, and the second effort caused him to lose the football. Casey Clawson just dropping back, showing pass, and flips it out to, to, to Travis Stevens. Antoine Bradford misses the tackle, and Harold Ursus just comes through, raking the football out. You see him try to get his hand around the football and strips it out, knocks it out. Good job by Harold Ursus allowing Aaron McWhorter to come up with a fumble recovery. Boy, Vanderbilt, yep, they're down 21, but they continue to lay out the hits. Turnovers even at one apiece. Vanderbilt down 21. Two timeouts remaining before half. They go to the air incomplete as Zolman tried to find Stricker, number 85. That stops the clock with 49 seconds left. Look at Greg Zolman. He just does not have a lot of a lot of time. Yeah, Bernard Jackson barreling down on him. Albert Hainsworth in his face all afternoon. Just not a whole lot of time to set his feet and deliver the football. 9 to 14. Little trickery, but Tennessee wouldn't buy it. Williams, the ball carrier, and uh, Richmond, who's been active this first half with another tackle. If you're going to teach the defensive end position, Constantine Richmond, you, you watch film on the guy, he stays at home, he doesn't get himself fooled into plays, lunges into the, the, uh, the offensive tackle, it finds and reads the draw and comes right back into the play, making a stop on Rodney Williams. 
Only a junior back for a senior campaign. Third down and six, clock running. Again, up the middle they go. Williams stumbles and falls, had room. And that will probably end the first half of play. And it does. We've played a half in Knoxville, Tennessee, leading Vanderbilt 21 to nothing. Leading by 21. Still short sleeves out here. But I look at the, uh, it's still 68 degrees. Not bad. But thunderstorms getting close. As a few drops of rain beginning to fall. So Stover has it teed up at the 35-yard line. Number 26, Scott, back around the goal line, ready to receive. And finally, third quarter underway. Line drive kick. No return, five yards deep in the end zone. And as we start this third quarter, Andre, here's our Affleck trivia question. Name the five Heisman Trophy winners whose last names have only four letters. <laughs> this is one of the best. This is a tricky one. Think about it. Tricky. And we'll give you the answer a little bit later. I've got a, this is going to make you think. A hint with one. Oh, really? <laughs> Casey Clawson up 21, starts the quarterback, under center. Tennessee from the eye, three, step drop, right on the button. Stallworth, could it be? Oh, he's gone! Dante Stallworth, touchdown, Tennessee! It's just a simple hitch route. Three-step drop to get Casey Clawson into a rhythm early in the second half. And Dante Stallworth makes the play. An absolute dagger to start this second half. 80-yard touchdown. A statement. <laughs> a statement. That's exactly what it was. And the extra point, Walls kicks it up and good. Dante Stallworth today. Three receptions, 102 yards. Still a buzz inside Neyland Stadium after the 80-yard touchdown from Clawson to Stallworth. Yeah, one play, 31 seconds, longest reception for Tennessee this season. Well, what a day for Stallworth. The 55-yard punt return to make it 21 nothing, and now he goes 80 yards from Clawson to make it 28 nothing over Vanderbilt. Walls with the kick and a deep kick. And no return as Hatcher takes a knee. Looking at this, Casey Clawson, just a three-step drop, a bad angle by the cornerback Lorenzo Parker, and then it's a double whammy. Gerald Jackson, the free safety, takes a bad angle, allows Dante Stallworth to just split the seam up the middle of the field. You see Lorenzo Parker take a bad angle, and then Gerald Jackson takes one as well, and Dante Stallworth, with that speed, nobody's going to catch him. I, I, back in the day, a few years ago, I could run like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> He missed three games because of that wrist injury, but he is absolutely full speed. And what Stallworth does, he puts weekly on his ankle, he tapes his ankles and puts names, numbers of players he respects who he wants to try to emulate. This week it's Moss, it's Hilliard, and Rice. You know what, Moss had a big game last weekend and, and Dante's playing right alongside of him today.
Vanderbilt down 28. Far side, and the catch is pulled down by Stricker. Andre, let's take a look around the SEC. This is scenario as we head down the home stre stretch, and in the East, it's basically winner take all. Florida, Tennessee next week. Winner wins the division. Next week, Auburn, LSU. Winner wins the division. And that's in college football. That's what you want it to boil down to. The last game of the season for those four teams being of some importance. And you want to play for all of it in the last weekend. After that's exactly play, what's happening. Dead ball foul, personal foul on the defense. Penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Boy, looking at that graphic, I feel like it's a final four in March. Really is. <laughs> <laughs> or, or early April, depending on when the uh, the date is. They play on that one in Atlanta? Go yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the penalty marches Vanderbilt down to the 47-yard line, first down. On the draw, Williams switches hands, cannot turn the corner. Good down-line pursuit led by Teddy Gaines, the left corner. It is difficult to get outside on Tennessee, and what do I see as another flag at the 45 and another at midfield? near side around the 50-yard line. Very busy for Bill Goss and his crew today, sorting uh, the flags out. There was a live ball foul, grabbing the face mask. That's a five-yard penalty from the end of the run. After the play, the foul in the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. We'll repeat, first down. So a five-yard penalty against Tennessee. 15 marched off against Vanderbilt. Repeat the first down back at the 37. Just really been frustrating oh. for Woody Woodenhofer. You could see it in the expression on his face along the sideline. This, this is stressful. stressful afternoon. Three wideouts split up top. Roman goes the distance from the shotgun. Pocket collapse on the run, on the throw. Midfield, he finds a man, and it is complete. It's number 84. Simone, his tight end. Well, an SEC title game shot. Big Bull Dreams all in the mix when Travis Stevens and the Tennessee Volunteers tangle with Heisman hopeful Rex Grossman and the Florida Gators on the Home Depot SEC football. And how about the matchup at quarterback? Clawson and Grossman. Two pretty good ones. Oh, boy. 17-7 when the day started for Clawson. 32 touchdowns, 11 picks for Rex Grossman. For more NFL news, go to cbs.sportsline.com. AOL keyword, CBS Sportsline. Dan Stricker in motion. Second down. Coleman under pressure. Throws over the top and incomplete. He's got Hainsworth. Jackson, everybody barreling down on him. It, it just forces him. He's not allowed to, to sit in the pocket and relax. He's got to make decisions. He's got to make them a lot faster than he would like to. I think Albert Hainsworth is just active today. 6'6", 310 pounds and moving like that. Two-year letterman from Hartsville, South Carolina. That's a lot of pass rush coming with just him alone. Vanderbilt, three of eight. Third down conversions. Goldman steps and throws. High pitch. It was a gift. A high throw. Rashad Baker. He's got blockers. Baker down the sideline. It'll mark it out at the 30. The Vanderbilt free safeties are just getting gifts today. First, Mark Jones, and now Rashard Baker. This was just a tip. You see Greg Zoma just reading out coverage. A tip right to Rashard Baker, who's just in coverage, in zone coverage, cover two. Two safeties on the hash mark, and he looks up, and it's in his hands. Now he's got blockers in front of him. Julian Battle and those guys leading the way. 
for Richard Baker down the sideline. Just sitting there in zone coverage. Kelly over here. Team leader in interceptions now with four. A 41 return, one yard return. Tennessee goes in zone. Crowd work flags. I do not see one. Washington was bumping around inside that 10 yard line with McWhorter. Finally, Aaron McWhorter is able to to get his body inside of Kelly Washington and kind of forces him inside. He's in good position. He's reading him out. He gets his head around just at the last second to avoid having the interference penalty called on him. Now Washington was doing his share of pulling. Oh, absolutely. 12.06 left third quarter. Handoff on the ground. Stevens to the 25. Nate Morrow put the helmet on him. Well, today's Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete Award goes to Hunter Hillenmeyer of Vanderbilt University. Rigid Tools' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Vanderbilt University General Scholarship Fund. How about that? 3.76 in economics. That does not surprise me that it's a Vanderbilt player. Yeah. <laughs> with that, with the academic requirements to just get in the school there, it uh, does not surprise me whatsoever. Have an injured player down, and we'll take a timeout. Tennessee by 28. Antoine Bradford was the injured Commodore. He was able to walk off the field under his own power. Looks like a stinger on that left shoulder. Third down and five for Tennessee. Bobby Graham in motion. Clawson. Man coverage. Stallworth had a step incomplete. Okay, time, Andre, for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Name the five Heisman Trophy winners whose last names have only five letters. Leon Hart, Notre Dame. John David Crow, A&M. Billy Sims, Oklahoma. Andre Ware, Houston. And Charlie Ward from Florida State. Kind of nice to be part of a pretty tough trivia question, Mr. Ware. <laughs> really is. I, I, you know what? I had a tough time with that one myself. It was one that I really couldn't figure out. Alex Walls, two for two on the day. This will be from 42. And just got it between the uprights. So for three for three for Walls. And the lead now, 31 for Tennessee. Tennessee, sixth ranked in the country, leading Vanderbilt comfortably, 31 to nothing, 11-27 left third quarter. Sixth time, Vandy's D has allowed 30 or more points this season. Tennessee, four plays, just five yards, and the third field goal of the day for Walls from 42 yards. Another fine kick. Five yards deep, no return for Hatcher. Now we just talked about my partner. I'm gonna take you back to an earlier time, a younger time. Andre Ware, University of Houston. His Heisman Trophy season, 1989. Boy, you have aged. Now you, you weren't able to actually receive the trophy. You're gonna play Rice, and your mom picked up the hardware. Yeah, the love of my life. She, uh, she was there to, to sub in for me and. And uh, she did a great job. She's made us some pies, too, this That's year. Right. Some pretty good ones. Whoa. <laughs> what a cook. What a special moment in your life. Really 1989. Was. It really was. First and ten. Vanderbilt. Goldman. He lose. Pressure and throws. Incomplete. Dan Stricker, the intended receiver. Andre, a lot of talk about who's the lead man for the Heisman. Well, you know, there's a, a lot of talent, but, you know, after yesterday, that one may be gone, and the other three may be, may be still in the running, but that upset yesterday at, uh, with, at Colorado kind of did it for Eric Crouch. Well, the numbers Grossman has posted are staggering, 32 touchdowns, 11 picks, but Dorsey has been just solid, nearly 2,300 yards in Miami, very much in the title hunt. Second down, 10. Zolman throws, connects. It's Mathena to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. 
Mathena just work in the middle of the field in zone coverage, and Robert Peace now in the ball game for Dominic Stevenson. Comes up and makes a, 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 a sure tackle. Mathena, one of the faster Commodores. He's been clocked at 4-4 in the 40. A little more speed than, uh, than we give him credit for. Oh, oh yeah. 4-4 four, four guys on that team. There's the numbers on Zolman, 12 of 21. Vanderbilt, 3 of 9 on third down. Conversions, they've missed their last five. Throws. Oh, my hit. My goodness, what a hit. Stricker somehow hung on. First down, Vanderbilt. And it was Teddy Gaines. That, that's the second big hit by Teddy Gaines. Just an out route by Stricker, who comes across in motion. He's up the field. He's going to press inside and come right back outside. He's got to sit that route down. It's a zone It's zone coverage, cover two with free safety help over the top. You keep running, and those are the licks that you're going to take in that coverage. Stricker, a junior out of Cincinnati. Bandy on the ground. Williams still trying to plow his way. He'll get out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Rashad Baker, the free safety. Still a little fight and a little scrap oh, yeah. in the Vandy offense. They, they, uh, they're they not going to surrender. They're here to play, and they're going to play for 60 minutes. And you, and you bring up a good point because, again, there's just some controversy, some talk, some discussion all week since, really, since Woody Woodenhofer stepped down. Mm -hmm. Who quit on who? No, I don't I don't see any quit in this Vanderbilt no. offense. I see that the defense is, is fighting and scrapping. They're going to be here until it gets to the, to the end. Whistles, flags, and we've seen plenty of those today. One, two, three. Yellow hankies down. Dead ball, all start on the offensive line. Five yard penalty, second down. Next Saturday, Andre, all guts, all grit, all glory. It's the ultimate celebration of pride, tradition, and the American spirit, the cadets and the midshipmen. The Army-Navy game live from Philadelphia, right here on CBS Sports. And it all begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman on College Football Today. That one has some, some special meaning. Always Which does. Year, always does. It's just rich in tradition, but a little bit extra on this one this year. 13 flags thrown in this game. Zolman under pressure. Tackle him down. Dropped at the 22. That's a coverage sack. Buck Fitzgerald in at the safety position and is blitzing. He's unaccounted for, and Greg Zolman just can't get rid of get rid of the football. He had a pick scheme going, which usually takes a little bit longer for the receivers. Pick scheme with, with crossers underneath. You have to allow it to develop, and when you got a blitz on, you got to find your high receiver. Greg Zolman wasn't able to find him then. That brings up third down and 21. Mustina in motion. Play clock was zero, and a flag. And now some uh, some words. five yards. Yes, indeed. Play clock ran dry Sunday on 60 Minutes. Thomas Kincaid has sold more canvases than Rembrandt, Van Gogh, Renoir, and that's why he's on 60 Minutes Sunday, right here on CBS. Fifth-year head coach, Woody Woodenhofer. Down 31. Oh, my. Zolman took it around the knees. Richmond's had himself a football game. He's sharing time with, Con with uh, Will Overstreet for that defensive end position. But he comes outside, just gives a quick little swim move, and now he's diving. Leaves his feet for Greg Zolman. Just outside release. Greg Zolman's looking down the field, does not see him coming, and then all of a sudden he's there in a hurry. Dante Stallworth awaits the putt. Pedals back, 41-yard line. Stallworth up the middle he goes, dancing, spinning, and then taken under at the 46. One, two, three, four, five white jerseys. 31-0, Tennessee. A 
we were here last time, the story was Kelly Washington. Yeah. He's, he's had a fabulous afternoon as well, but then you throw this guy in on the other side. Wow, they've really become unbelievable, unreal on offense. Well, you know, there's still a former Utah and on the other side, Woody Woodenhofer. Two programs opposite direction. Yeah. Probably Graham in motion. Clawson stays in. They throw far sideline. Good pursuit. And let's go back to New York. Update Penn State, Michigan State. Craig and Andre, you can say this about Matt Seneca leaving the game. Zach Mills has certainly made a difference. He's led Penn State to three scoring drives. Here hitting R.J. Luke, 64 yards. That makes it 31-28. This game long from over in East Lansing. Let's get back to Knoxville, Craig and Andre. Thank you, Tim. Andre, you know. Tim, you know. They don't, they're, not, they're not quitting on uh, Paterno. No, not at all. No. Not in that program. Obviously controversy in Happy Valley this year, but Paterno gets things turned around. Travis Stevens squares his shoulders, but drop at the line of scrimmage at the 44. Good pursuit by Hildenmeyer. You know, talked about the two programs going opposite directions. It's staggering to think. Tennessee, 41 bowl appearances. Vanderbilt, three. Their last was 82. It's been a long, long time. Let's go. Always staying in shape. That was you, wasn't it? No. Nah. <laughs> Four wide receivers set. Third down and eight. There's a double clap again by Clawson. He throws over the middle, complete. Stolen on a spin. Breaks the tackle and inside the 20. Nearly another six as Gerald Jackson brought it down to free safety. Dante Stallworth just inside on the inside receiver, man-to-man -man coverage, nice little hookup inside, away from the defender, and then he's going to spin outside and just fabulous after the catch. Harold Lursis, he's got a, a, a target, a bullseye on him, and Casey Kloss is just following him all around the field. Whoever he's defending, that's who's going to get the football. Well, what a day. Four catches, 128 yards. How about that, a 32-yard per catch average? At the 18-yard line, Stevens off the right side, lowers his shoulders and gets to the 10. About a nine-yard pickup, second down and one. Well, the pads still pop, and of course this is in-state, Tennessee and Vanderbilt. There have been some, some fabulous receivers to come through this program. And, and if there are any better than Dante Stallworth's performance today, I would love to sit down and watch some film and, and, and take it all in because he is putting on a performance. And that's coming off a three touchdown performance last yeah. week against yeah. Kentucky. Second down two from the eye. Watson, man coverage, Stallworth, and complete. And no flags. <laughs> Lorenzo Parker trying to cover Stallworth, and that's a task when you're out there by all your lonesome. Lorenzo Parker finally gets himself in some pretty good position. He's been picked on all afternoon, too, but here he just turns around at the last second, gets a hand in right there just to knock the ball away from Dante Stallworth. And even then, Dante Stallworth's asking for pass interference. <laughs> Trying to keep that yards per catch average up, isn't he? Third down and two. Clawson's <laughs> gone the distance. On, a few more raindrops starting to drop here in Knoxville. Stevens trying to go up and over. He will be close, but good job by Bradford, who was shaken up earlier, the middle linebacker, plugging that hole. Yep, as promised, the rain has arrived. It's good to see Antoine Bradford back in the game. He's the team's leading tackler, 102 tackles coming into the ball game, and two sacks. The defense that Woody Woodenhofer runs, it's predicated on the success of the linebackers. Those guys, you remember when he ran the steel curtain, Jack Lambert, Robin Cole, Jack Ham, all those guys were, were big-time linebackers for him. So he's got to depend on the success of the linebackers to make his defense go. Timeout called by Vanderbilt. Fourth and less than a yard when we come back. Tennessee ranked sixth in the country. Well, the statement they needed, they wanted, continues. It's fourth down, less than a yard. And after the timeout by Vanderbilt, Cole Fuller says, let's go for it. Why not? Up and over again. 
Did he get it? Yeah. A good spot around the eight-yard line. Mike Adams trying to fill the gap, but Stevens got the first down. Just deceptively strong. You think a guy 5'9", 190 pounds wouldn't pack that kind of punch. But Bob, he's, he's well, so well put together that he runs and runs with power. He's got quickness. Watching him on film, he's leaping over guys. And as soon as he comes down, his foot hits the ground. Reminded me of Barry Sanders. Yeah. Just right outside. 12 carries for 54 yards. Short burst. A senior out of Clarksville, Tennessee. First and goal. Volunteers. Stevens work inside and cut back up the middle. Three yards to the five. And the clock will run under five minutes left third quarter. Say the most, uh, we, we talked about what Philip Fulmer had to say about Stevens, but again, it, it echoes. Plays like a man. Waited his turn. And a lot of times in big Division I programs, Andre, there's a stack of, of running backs and wideouts, and everybody just yeah. kind of sy systematically takes their turn. Second and goal. Lost it. It's wet out there on the deck, and Vanderbilt covers up. Well, that's not what Coach Villapumer wanted to see. It, it looked like a, a pretty good exchange from quarterback to running back. Casey Clawson with a snap. It looks like he's got his hands on it and then it just kind of slips out. The rain has started to come down, and that's probably the problem with a handoff. See it here, Casey Clawson, a, a clean snap, sticks it in the pocket there, and it just comes straight out and up in the air. Just, just a wet football. Chuck Losey. Covered up for Vanderbilt. So one, a bit of a bright moment for Vanderbilt. How about a lucky moment as the ball popped out? Zolman throws on the fingertips. Hassanalu with the catch. And down to the 21. Tomorrow on the NFL Today, Dion hooks up with the Raiders' Jerry Rice. Marcus looks at grueling work out of the Giants' Tiki Barber and Greg Camilla, plus all you need to know about the big Raiders-Giants matchup. That and more tomorrow on the NFL Today here on CBS. You think Dion and Jerry going to go out and maybe a little one-on-one -on -one coverage? They should. <laughs> <laughs> Zolman, 14 of 23. Clawson, 19 of 28. Clawson is near more than double Zolman's output today by yards. Blitz coming. Zolman down at the 16-yard line. And it's Ritzman. He's had a fine game from the right side. Just a lot of pressure up front from that front corner. Constantine Ritzman comes down inside and disrupts everything. Then Now he's going to come back right into the play and get himself another sack, just barreling down inside. He is a fantastic speed rusher. From the outside, then he plays. He stays at home on defense, allows him to make a lot of plays by just playing within the scheme of Coach Phil Fulmer's defense. Fifth time, Zolman has gone down. They tried to, they wanted to halt the pressure by Tennessee, but unable to do so. Zolman again, under pressure, tucks and runs, hits around the 18-yard line. Constantine Richmond again. This time they try to double team him with a running back. Keenan Arkin and Rodney Williams try to double team him. He's sitting there fighting off the double team, and all of a sudden here comes the quarterback, Greg Zolman, and he falls into another sack. Well, what a fine Richmond has been for Tennessee. From Germany. And now the punt. Eric Parker at the 40 and is popped and dropped. Well, tonight on the district, Natasha Kinski is beautiful, mysterious, and she wants DC's top cop. But is it love or a fatal attraction? Don't miss an all new episode of the district. That's tonight on CBS. Good, nice programs on, mm -hmm. on CBS. Nice. Not a heavy rain, but it is falling. Well, we looked at the weather map about two hours, two and a half hours ago, and it looked bad out. Heading, uh, heading to Knoxville. Clawson throws. 
Washington upended at the 50-yard line. This time, Lorenzo Parker is going to make sure that he brings down Kelly Washington. He missed on, on Dante Stallworth, and it turned into an 80-yard touchdown. That same route, just a little hitch route, catches Vanderbilt in zone coverage. He's going to hook up outside, three-step drop, and get the football out. Just a for sure tackle that time by Lorenzo Parker. He's not going to give up another touchdown on that side. Well, think about next year. I mean, there's still obviously a lot of football oh, to yeah. be played for Tennessee. But Philip Fulmer is going to come back with a junior quarterback in Casey Clawson, a senior in Dante Stallworth, and a sophomore in Kelly Washington. And they've got a stable of backs, too. Yeah. Behind Travis Stevens. Tinsley and Houston, to name a few. The fullback, Bartholomew, plows for about three. And we talked about one of the weapons, Dante Stallworth. Four catches, 128 yards. That's 32 per catch. Unreal. And then, of course, the punt return yards, a total of two touchdowns. Ooh. Stallworth Staggering. scoring. Stallworth scoring on a 55-yard punt return and also an 80-yard throw from Clawson. Second down, Tennessee from the eye. Travis Stevens, second effort, maybe to the 43. Now you watch him run, and you just got to admire that shoulder lean. He's he's north and south, but then he's got the quickness to get in and out of a hole, to get side, get get his way outside of outside of traffic but always leaning forward. The pile's going to always go in to, to his advantage. And that's where the, the, the term running downhill that's absolutely comes from. He gets his shoulder square, yeah. and he's headed downhill. Final seconds of the third quarter. Third down and three. There's that clap again by Casey Cross, and this time Stevens swarmed under at the 45 led by Morrow the outside linebacker and that's that will end the third quarter here in Knoxville Tennessee over Vanderbilt 31 nothing will return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station Tennessee flirting with a shutout over Vanderbilt, leading 31-0. Andre, I keep going back to what Philip Fulmer told us in his office. It just kind of echoes how important it was to make a statement I today. I think he has. <laughs> Definitely he has. Cole Quick, the left footer, with a nice punt. Takes a bounce inside the five. Touchback. Vandy will have it at the 20-yard line. Fourth quarter underway in Knoxville. We'll be back. Tennessee very much in control since early in that second quarter. They lead 31-0 over Vanderbilt. The Commodores with the football. Zolman will start at the 20-yard line. He sets up and throws. It's complete. Stricker takes a shot at the 25. Great bowler Jack and Andre Ware. It's not the fact, in my opinion, that Vanderbilt by any means is quitting this football game. It's just an exceptional, exceptional play by Tennessee. Yeah, the performance of Casey Clawson distributing the football to a, a lot of different receivers. Just Jason Witten as well. Dante uh, Stallworth's performance. He, he, just across the board, it's been fabulous. Second down, five. Outside goes Williams. Five to soon, first down, and again, the pads continue to pop. Tennessee and Vandy still unloading. Stephen Marsh, the strong safety, got a hit in there on, on Rodney Williams. A flag, however, down again. Holding, offense, penalties 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. Well, next Saturday is the season premiere of CBS Sports NCAA Basketball. We'll have split national coverage of the Kansas Jayhawks taking out the Arizona Wildcats or the Boston College Eagles taking on the Michigan Wolverines. Check local listings, and for more to go, more, go to cbs.sportsline.com and our AOL keyword, CBS Sportsline. 
A total of 16 flags, Andre, in this game. In round, Stricker. For an update on Penn State, Michigan State, back to Tim Brando in New York. Tim. Craig, this has always been a high-scoring series, but 28 unanswered points for Penn State, and Zach Mills the key. Here he goes in from a yard out. Two touchdowns in 65 seconds for the Nittany Lions. They're up 11. Penn State trying to maybe sneak in, bowl eligible. Yeah, absolutely. My goodness. What a comeback. Third down at 12. Mathena in motion. Zolman. Deep drop throws, and it's caught. Mathena, the motion man, breaks a tackle. And down to the 36-yard line, first down, Vanderbilt. Mark Jones, the free safety, made the stop. You alluded to the guy having 4-4 having four, four speed, but they're just going to run crossing routes underneath. Mathena just comes open, shows some shiftiness, and gets north and south up, up the football field. step, but regained it to the 41. Greg Zolman able to have some success. He's, throw, he's in the shotgun, just quick step and deliver the football. He's able to, to avoid that, that big pass rush that's been coming all afternoon. Got an injured ball on the far side at the 38. It's number 56, Bernard Jackson. I tell you, Tennessee's defense is uh, beat up enough. Jackson, a three-year letterman out of Louisville. And as they take a look at Jackson, we'll take a break. 12.51 left here in Knoxville. Welcome back, Bernard Jackson was able to get off the field under his own power. Taking a look at that left ankle, left knee. For his second, we'll pass it along to him deep. Second down and five, fumble, covered up. Zorman has it. There's back, our man again. Back at the 33-yard line, and yeah, you're right, it's Ritzman. Just a bad snap. This one's probably because of the weather. And just a straight, a beeline. Keenan Arkin can't even get his hands on him. He's there so fast. You know, just, just a wet football. You gotta secure the ball before you can throw it. Greg Zolman doesn't even get his hands on it before Constantine Ritzman's there to, to bring him down. You know, if you see that ball is uncovered, sometimes the officials under heavy rain will, will cover the ball. Shotgun with a pitch out. Williams can go nowhere. Tackled at the 30. Andre, how active has Tennessee been? Now, we talked about the first seven games. One sack per 8.5 pass plays. The last two games, Tennessee has struggled. One every 45 pass plays today. They have brought heat against Vanderbilt. One sack every 4.3 pass plays today. Zolman has been under pressure from the start. I'll say they're back on track. Stallworth lets this ball bound, and he'll go inside the 20 to the 19. First down to the 19. And that's where Tennessee will start up. Officials conferring, however, again at the 45. Bill Goss and his crew, very, very busy today. Kind of tells Vanderbilt's story right there, that expression on, on Woody Woodenhofer's face. It's kind of kind of rained all over Vanderbilt the whole the whole season. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So let's kick again. You want to re-kick it to Dante. 
the Mr. He's Mr. Star Wars today. <laughs> you gonna, gonna dress him, Mr.? That's right. Is that right? He is Mr. Star Wars. So Joe Webb will kick again, and Stallworth now inside his own 35. Again, just before half, Stallworth ran one back 55 yards to make it 21 nothing. Good snap. And Stallworth at the 36, nearly lost it in the rain. Tennessee, that's where they'll start their next drive, and they are just rolling along. Joey Matthews, a junior out of Sevierville, Tennessee. Only thrown four passes on the season. He replaces Casey Clawson, 20 of 29. 278 yards and a pair of touchdowns. It's not cold out tonight. And tomorrow here on CBS, the NFL doubleheader day. Pittsburgh at Tennessee. Can Eddie George get back on track? And late games, Oakland at New York. The Giants taking on the Raiders. And it all begins with the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. And for more, go to NFL.com, AOL keyword, NFL.com. So Joey Matthews under center for Tennessee. Here comes Cedric Houston. Wrapped up, still driving for the first down at the 47. It's good to see Joey Matthews get, get an opportunity to play his last home game. Oh, he got a nice year. round of applause. Yeah, he really did. As he came on the, on the football field. Matthews deciding to forego his senior year. He's moving on with life. Really? He's going to graduate and, and uh, hang up the cleats, so to speak. Pitch comes near side. Tinsley. Derek Tinsley, one of the fine true freshmen out of Marietta, Georgia, with his ninth carry of the year. He's got a lot of talented backs. I mentioned earlier behind... Travis Stevens, you're, you're getting a look at the future at tailback for well, Tennessee. And Andre Cedric Houston's the one that people are going to really keep their eye on. And this guy runs a sub 4 4 40. At six foot and over 200 pounds, he's moving. Under 10 minutes left. Second down and eight. Quick drop and a throw, far sideline, and it's pulled in. LCBS Sports Line stat of the game. Quarterback sacks allowed. Tennessee, aggressive defensively. They've knocked Zolman down six times for a loss of 65 yards. For complete game stats, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sports Line. I once witnessed 16 sacks in a ball game. I was part of it. I, I wasn't the one being sacked, but I was just going to ask, were you on the back side no, no, of that? No, no, thank goodness. Third down and short, the keeper, Matthews, the first down. All you have to do is just follow the big front of Tennessee. And so the clock will continue to run. Philip Fulmer's got a connection with Vanderbilt. Coached a year. Coached one year. But you know what? He's a Tennessee man. That's right. He'll tell you. Came home. Bubble under snap. Matthews to the 40-yard line. Now there's Philip Fulmer today. Here he is as the offensive coordinator back in 1979. So much success has followed him here. How about going on his 93rd win in not even his, uh, in a total of 10 years yet, a national championship. He's a two-time SEC champion in 97 and 98. Up the middle, big hole. Jabari Davis inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Another freshman in that corral of running backs. Wow. 
watch this hole open just kind of like the parting of the red sea. look at this right up the middle of the field good job by scott wells and tavis smith big offensive lineman up front well, allowing those freshman running backs to have a field day they're not used to all this action are they uh, no. first and ten at the 14 yard line matthews blocking the signals they drive straight ahead and once again davis the ball carrier now i already talked about houston with the 4-4 speed davis at 230 runs sub 4-5 like, what do you talk about recruiting I, you know what i if you stand there and you it's a great job by coach phil, phil former and his staff but if you're those guys you know there's not enough footballs to go around they're all freshmen they're all coming in at the same time and as tennessee has a history of bringing in a lot of backs and playing them all but uh wow it's just it just doesn't seem like there's enough footballs to go around a lot of colleges to go to though I'll tell you one great story that randy sanders shared with us they have actually turned away the great wideout ike Hilliard. Yep. it's almost first come first serve tinsley the ball carrier off the left side inside the 10 to the eight rick wild the strong safety with the stop for vanderbilt No, I've watched Woody Woodenhofer all day. That pose has not changed very much at all. That same expression. Yeah. It's almost a, a look of disbelief. Timeout whistled on the field. Vanderbilt wants to take a timeout. And the rain now beginning to fall a little bit hotter in Knoxville. Still, though, 6-12 left, Tennessee by 31. Throw those ladies an umbrella, please. That's right, there are no umbrellas allowed. Not even on the field. You've got to rough it. Matthews on the roll out, throws, incomplete. Boy, good battle up there for the football. Montrell Jones, another freshman, was fighting Lorenzo Parker. Matthews with a little smile. You, know, you talk about those freshman running backs. Cedric Houston, Derek Tinsley, all those guys. Roy Davis. Another was almost here. Cornell Williams, mm -hmm. the, the exceptional back that uh, is down at Auburn. He was almost a Tennessee volunteer as well. Next Saturday, it's all guts, it's all grit, all glory. It's the ultimate celebration of pride, tradition, and the American spirit. The cadets and the midshipmen, the Army-Navy game, live from Philadelphia, right here on CBS Sports. And it all begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman on college football today. That's live from Philadelphia, Army-Navy. Now, looking ahead, as Vanderbilt will close out the Woody Woodenhofer era, they will close it out on the road next weekend at Ole Miss. Of course, Tennessee, and there was some concern about overlooking this game. Philip Fulmer was, you know, very candid about it. No, no way this team can afford that. They lost here at home, a game you and I did against Georgia. And this was, a, again, we go back to the statement game. We, we need to make a statement. We, this is the time now to, to pick things up. And they, I wonder if the statement will continue next week on the road he at made, Florida. He made a statement. I think he was also sending a message. Good, very good. That uh, he's, his, his football team's ready to play, especially offensively. They are going to mend this week defensively, and it will make for a fantastic battle. Well, up by 31, you can afford to take this, this chance here on fourth down. They're two for two today, five of eight on the season. This will be fourth and four from around the eight-yard line. Joey Matthews in relief of Casey Clawson. He's going to be short. And so now Vanderbilt will get the football. On the CBS Sunday movie, they couldn't stand each other until they realized they were perfect for each other. Oscar winner Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan star in the blockbuster comedy You've Got Mail Sunday after 60 minutes, except on the West Coast. 
It's a good move. Oh, yeah. Good one. You've got mail. Benji Walker, now quarterbacking for Vanderbilt. He's a sophomore from Brentwood, Tennessee. In relief now, Greg Zolman, who has been uh, pushed around quite a bit today by Tennessee's front. Andre, we go back to the Final Four in the SEC, basically. Eastern Division, very simple. Next week, Florida, Tennessee, the winner wins the East. In the West, it's Auburn and LSU. The Auburn. winner there wins the West. Auburn's got to go to LSU. That's, yeah. that's going to be a tough task for Death, uh, Death Coach Valley. Tuberville. Yeah, that'll be a tough one for for Coach Tuberville and, and uh, the Auburn Tigers. 527, clock running. They pitch it out. Rodney Williams breaks a tackle outside the 20 to the 21-yard line. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Upstate on Penn State, Michigan State. Tim? Well, you know, Craig, Michigan State and Penn State both have had last-second dramatics and victories. Michigan State against Michigan, Penn State against Northwestern. Here's Jeff Smoker's third touchdown pass of the day to tight end Chris Baker. And moving in on another dramatic finish, 42-37 Nittany Lions. Thank you, Tim. What a great one there. Let me do the math. Is that 42-37? Uh, That's uh, 79 points That's scored of, in that one. A lot of points. Here it's 31-0. Williams outside, 25, up to around the 30, about two yards shy of the first down. And their clock continues to tick, under five minutes left. In Tennessee, about sometime tomorrow around noon, they will begin to plan their attack against the Florida Gators. You're talking with Coach Fulmer, he just he mentioned that it, it, they won't uh, celebrate this one too long. They'll be right in preparation for uh, for the Florida Gators. Second down and two. Benji Walker up and over the middle has a man a flash down. Brandon Smith, the wideout, a uh, flag down at the 39. First indication against Tennessee. Pass interference. Defense. Finally, 15 yards and a first down. Tonight on CBS, the most famous reindeer of all is back. Don't miss this holiday classic. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, followed by an all-new touch by an angel. And then don't miss Craig T. Nelson and special guest star Natasha Kinski in the district tonight here on CBS. There's so much depth at tailback. They have Corey Larkin, the tailback, with another freshman lined up out here at corner now. Benji Walker steps up and throws. Intercepted. Fitzgerald, Buck Fitzgerald. He's the third deep on the left corner spot, a senior who just plays consistent, steady football. Just a comeback along the outside. Buck Fitzgerald is out there waiting, waiting for the route by Dan Stricker. He's just outside playing, outside position, plays the route, plays the comeback route, and it's wet. He knows that he can't really cut sharp, so he's out there in position in zone coverage, just waiting on the receiver to make his break. Dan Stricker breaks inside, the ball is thrown outside, Buck Fitzgerald comes up with, his, with an interception. And he's had a pretty good ball game. Yeah, first interception of the season for Fitzgerald. The senior from Nashville. On the ground, the ball carrier, Jabari Davis. You know, one of the great moments here at Neyland Stadium happened back in 1997. There he is, Peyton Manning playing his last regular season game against Bandy as he led the Volunteers Orchestra following Tennessee's 17-10 win. Oh, Rocky Top. I think he enjoyed his experience here at Tennessee. Oh, indeed, indeed. Matthews under center. And off again, Davis squeezes through, and the pads keep popping to the 49-yard line. Clawson has played a fine game. Matthews in relief. We do have to mention, though, Clawson has, as you saw Peyton Manning there, it's rare that you get quarterbacks, Andre, who go back to their universities and embrace players. Well, 
he's embraced Casey Clawson. They talk at least twice a week. The, the successful programs around the country, that takes place. Again, handoff, Davis. He'll pick up five to the 43. Now mark this on your calendar, December 1st, check out the season premiere of CBS Sports NCAA Basketball. That's where the Kansas Jayhawks take on the Arizona Wildcats or the Boston College Eagles visit the Michigan Wolverines on the home of the NCAA Championship, CBS Sports. How about that matchup of coaches, Roy Williams, Lute Olsen. Next weekend here on CBS, coming up on two and a half minutes remaining in what has been a one-sided Tennessee game. Davis is happy to take the ball, and they continue to pound away downfield to the 36. Cedric Houston, pardon me, with the ball. I know it's a, it's a ways away, but you have all this talent. Jabari Davis and uh, Cedric Houston, Derek Tinsley. Who, who, in your opinion, kind of stands out as the heir apparent to the tailback position? First and ten, volunteers at the Vanderbilt 36-yard line. From the eye. Outside, bounces, Houston. Tries to make a little move, and inside the 25, down to the 21-yard line. Tennessee has this game very much well in hand. Next week, it is the Florida Gators, and here's what Philip Fulmer thinks about that game. We go and we play to our our best abilities, you know, we've got as good a chance to win there as anybody. And, uh, you know, last year we played them really well here and lost on a funny play at the end. And the year before last, we played them really well down there and made it uh, interesting. So, but we've got to go play well. Up the middle, Houston, touchdown, Tennessee. Who's your guy? Houston, Davis, oh, who's the heir apparent? Tinsley. I mean, if you want to go size, Davis at 230, but you kind of stay with tradition. Yeah. And you stay with uh, the 190 or the 200 pounder. But it's a tough problem that an offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders, will enjoy, as will Philip Fulmer. Extra point to come. And the route continues. The statement game that Philip Fulmer so much desired. Extra point to the uprights. Timeout, Tennessee by 38. 134 left here in Knoxville. Difficult times for Vanderbilt. They trail Tennessee 38 to nothing. They have not been shut out this season. Six plays, 59 yards, and all six plays were rushing. 233 off the clock. And they're celebrating here, but yet a game of importance next week against the Florida Gators. No return. And now it's time for our Army player of the game. And right in your living room, there he is, Dante Stallworth. Four receptions, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Two punt returns for 67. Six touches, 195 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. Dante Stallworth. Now, early in the season, had that game taken place, Tennessee and Florida, he would not have been available to play in that football game. To have him back, it gives Steve Spurrier and their defensive staff a little bit, something a little bit extra to have to worry about. Minute 34 left. Novell McKenzie, a redshirt freshman, with his first McKenzie. carry of the day. McKenzie out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Clock running. Woodenhofer will be anxious just to get this one over with. He'll finish things up on the road at Ole Miss next week. And that's a rare smile, you see, and there's the bucket. There's the, there's the Gatorade. There's the Gatorade. And more coming. Hey, a cup just as good as a bucket. <laughs> Again, McKenzie to the 30. McKenzie carries Scott Robert Peace. Well,
one thing for sure, Andre, where Tennessee will take on Steve Spurrier with, with an edge, with emotion, with momentum. They really will. I mean, offensively, they they look as good as as anybody I've witnessed this season. Defensively, they're going to mend. They're going to have Big John Henderson and those guys back, and it should make for one heck of a ball game. McKenzie fighting his way to the 40-yard line. And now they wind the clock. And defensive coordinator John Chavis said, and as did Philip Fulmer, enjoy this one for a while, but they'll be at work looking at game tape by uh, about noontime tomorrow. Benji Walker weaving his way to the 44-yard line. And the final seconds will tick down here in Knoxville. Philip Fulmer. Now the Volunteers will jump to 9-1 on the season. Vanderbilt, 2-8. Greg Bullerjack as we say so long from Neyland Stadium here in Knoxville with a final score in convincing fashion, Tennessee over Vanderbilt, 38-0. Coming up next, Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman with the College Football Today post-game report. Tennessee with the shutout, 38-0. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.